There is a lot going on this weekend in football. There's some bad weather games you need to be alerted to. And at the end of this episode, there's a bad, bad, bad thing happening to me. Make sure you stick around and check it out. Like the video, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything, and enjoy the show. The holidays can be hectic, but preparing festive meals just got easier. Now you can cut out grocery shopping and limit meal prep time with Hello Fresh. Hello Get up Fresh. To 14 free meals plus three free gifts. Three free gifts. With the code footballers14 at HelloFresh.com slash footballers14. And Foot Clan, we are dog people. This is a dog show. And did you know that 72% of people don't know what kind of dog they have? I've been one of those people. I rescued a mutt, I didn't know what it was. I wish I could have taken better care of my Barkley. You had a what? With an Embark dog DNA test. Embark is the only dog DNA test provider that supplies dog owners with the knowledge to understand our furry friends and take actionable steps to improve the life and the longevity of our dogs. It's going to reveal your dog's relatives with the world's only canine DNA relative finder decode over 350 breeds and screen for 210 plus genetic health risks. This holiday season, understand your dog better with Embark, the highest rated dog DNA test. Right now, Embark has a limited time offer on their breed and health kit and their purebred kit for our listeners. Go to EmbarkVet.com to get the lowest price of the season, including free shipping and $64 off with promo code FOOTBALLERS. Visit EmbarkVet.com and use the promo code FOOTBALLERS to save $64 and get the perfect gift for a happy, healthy holiday. This is Kyle Juszczyk from the San Francisco 49ers, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. <laughs> Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's Friday time. Oh, yes. I think I had a higher yards per carry on that welcome in than Zeke had last night. Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just kept waiting and waiting. Jerry Jones told me. Serious. That said a serious quote. Jerry Jones quote. <laughs> Very important. Serious load was, was about to happen. <laughs> and, uh, it did not. They got 15 touches. Was that the tagline for the old total cereal? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, he did get 15 touches. Very tough run defense. But um, welcome into the show. Friday, December 3rd. Andy, Mike, and Jason, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Matchups, wheel of shame, news to talk about. Uh, already joking about last night's game. Give me some takeaways from the 27-17 Cowboy victory. Biggest takeaway has to be Taysom Hill. Um, we've talked about him all season. Uh, he was a stream of the week. Obviously, last night I was talking about I was a little worried, missing both tackles, missing Kamara, and apparently all that did is make him run the ball more, over 100 rushing yards. And when you can do that, you're you're always going to be fantasy relevant at the quarterback position. So he is a must pick up if you didn't already pick him up and well, stream him. I mean, we have to see. We have to see the, the extent of the, the finger injury because that was like that was probably the bigger uh, contributor to the running where I mean, it, so if you didn't watch the game, Taysom Hill does the, is the thing where he's on the on the follow through of a throw goes right into a defender's arm jacks up his hand they put a splint on his finger and he toughed it out and played through the rest of the game but it was clearly bothering him four interceptions uh where like and he's so strange like some there are plays where you're like that's a that, good throw that was a great throw like that was incredible touch that was perfect accuracy and then you know, some throws where it was what are you thinking? Well, you have to you keep him in mind. He's ball. barely played quarterback. <laughs> yeah, I, I understand. He's not being paid like that, but he has barely played. But he was as as long as that hand is okay moving forward, he should be very solid for fantasy football because a lot of those runs are not 
the play is breaking down and I'm going to scramble. It was, no, this is a Lamar Jackson call where the only play call is run. I'm, I'm going to get, I'm going to run this ball as soon as it touches my hands. There was the most classic Tony Pollard, Ezekiel Elliott debate type of game because you had half the work twice. The production had the touchdown Tony Pollard with the breakaway 58 yard touchdown run. You did have that early Michael Gallup touchdown where oh man, that was a first down inside the one they chose to throw on first down. And so you thought Zeke might have his opportunity to basically do what he did last week. If it's 13 for 45 and a touchdown, you're not worried. You you got through it. Yeah, I, I'm not worried at all. I mean, he did have the predominant workload. And, and in the end, the only reason that you're worried, like people How wouldn't be wor worried. People I wouldn't am. be worried about Zeke if it wasn't for a 58-yard run. That's not true. For Pollard. That's not true. I, people are worried about Zeke because he looks bad. Because he's his elusive rating on the year is, is one of the worst in football. He's not getting around anybody he hasn't been outside the top 20 in the last four weeks he hasn't been dominant but he's getting the workload and he's been fine for fantasy now he came up against the hardest matchup for fantasy I mean you look at Pollard was six for 13 outside of the one big broken play so I'm I'm not worried about Zeke going forward is my point because I think that he's still the guy for this team and he's going to be a I mean, maybe he's not a top five guy. I'm not saying like, oh, Zeke is is going to be what Dalvin Cook was before the injury. I'm just saying I don't think that Zeke is done or is going to be overtaken or Tony Pollard's the better player or anything like that. I have no worries of that. And like, I, Zeke looks bad. He looks really bad to me. Where his, his stat line, 13 for 45, I believe that his long carry of the 10 yards was like that last play maybe that wasn't the 10 but I mean a, a lot of like a half percent of his yards came on that very final carry where they were trying to burn where get into kneel out the clock and he, so I, I agree with you Jason that they're not gonna I don't think they're gonna pivot away from Zeke uh if anything happens it will be a a week off and they'll just rest him but if he's on the field they will keep giving him the ball but he looks he looks bad, and he is entering. He's he's pretty close to touchdown or bust uh, if he continues to look this bad. And to me, at least from my personal view of Zeke, that's worrisome to me. Sure, you know what you hope he can be is not Ramondre Stevenson level production on a week where you get a touchdown, and you know you look at Zeke and you want him to be a league winner for you, or a week winner for you, or at least somebody that's. Um, I don't know. I have my concerns uh, about the rest of this year because they're pushing through the injury. Yeah. If they sat him down and then he came back, it'd be different. And I so know you the think matchup this is, is injury related. That's a hundred percent. hundred percent. I do as yeah. well. So uh, dynasty wise, would you rather have Ezekiel Elliott or Mark Andrews? Why? Just wondering. Cause we made that, <laughs> we made that at the core of a trade at the core of I. a trade. Yeah. yeah I mean, it, it, that's hard. Cross positional. Um, I'm just feeling better about Zeke. That Zeke in Dynasty is not a like they got into this deal and they're obligated to him, but it's not a great feeling because the days of Ezekiel Elliott being, you know, the identity of the offense in Dallas was Zeke. It is not that anymore, nor Agreed. will it be in the future. Yeah, someone who did look good, Ceedee Lamb was seven for eighty nine and looked just sensational. Uh, I'm not sure how you don't. Make sure he sees at least like nine plus receptions in every single game because he just receptions. Yes, nine plus. Heck yeah, let's go. Let's go ten. Ten plus receptions. Every I thought game. you meant targets. No, no, no. Like you need to get the ball in his hands. His ability in the open field. He like Pollard had the big run, but Ceedee Lamb is is He's the star of the is show. the best player yeah. on Dallas for sure. I mean, yeah, the, he had a thirty three yard run uh, right. as well. Amari Cooper. Uh, it was not good news on Twitter heading right. into the game. Then he caught a 41-yard pass, <laughs> which freaked everyone out. Yes, it did. It was like, oh, no. Was this report wrong that he was his conditioning? He barely warmed up. His gas tank was empty. And that was it, though. Yeah. I mean, it it was, was emptied on that on that fort. Look, if you played Amari Cooper, you better be happy that he caught a 41-yard reception. Let's talk more news. 
news and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. We do have a lot of matchups to get to, so I don't want to stay here too long. But uh, Antonio Brown suspended three games for violated the NFL, violating the NFL's COVID protocols, along with two other players. Yeah, so the seems that the stories of the uh, fake vaccine card are they they came to light. I mean, for Antonio Brown, he does he loses money because of this. But if he was if he was going to miss two games from injury, anyways, then it's kind of a wash for in terms of how long he'll be out for fantasy it means he will probably come back in week 16 against carolina not a great matchup first week back do you keep you might, holding him you might want to drop him okay yeah i was gonna i was gonna ask the question do you play him in your week 16 matchup maybe maybe yeah. bad matchup week 17 Fully healthy championship at that point. he's got the jets so if you want to hold him for a championship week sure um okay uh we have no official out status for Dalvin Cook, DeAndre Swift, and Debo Samuel, which is very annoying for fantasy players. That's ridiculous. Um, Kyler Murray, DeAndre Hopkins are both expected to play, barring a setback against the Bears. That Whee! game that game could be a little bit uh, weathery up there in Chicago. A little bit rainy. We got a lot of weather happening this weekend. Yeah, it's going to have some implications on uh, the passing games in several markets. J James Robinson, limited on Thursday. There was a report that he didn't practice. Then apparently they marked him as limited. Concerns for Robinson? If since he just recently missed some time, not if he if he's limited today. It, but that is something to watch for the Friday report. Uh, speaking of limited, Odell Beckham Jr. got downgraded to not practicing on Thursday. Uh, Sean McVay still saying that he anticipates him and Daryl Henderson will play. Yeah, but they have not practiced, so I mean, very they, iffy. If Sony Michelle is still on your waiver wire, he should not be. Yeah, there's there's a chance that Daryl Henderson doesn't play. He's not practicing. Yeah. So uh, if he's out, the matchup is just so great. Melvin Gordon, 50-50 to play against the Chiefs. Okay. Said it on yesterday's, what was it, Green Room? No, that was the uh, the footcast. There's too many shots. <laughs> too many shots. <laughs> yeah, on the footcast, you know, you could finally see Javante Williams get all of the opportunity in a game, but I honestly, I I think Melvin Gordon's going to play. The storyline this year is that just when you think there's a, a little bit of an opportunity for <laughs> Javante, there's not. Yeah, Melvin Gordon keeps crashing the party. Yeah, and, and I think it was indicative last week when he went down and it seemed serious on the first play, and then he still came back and got identical work yeah. that, that if he's healthy – He'll be there, and he'll get the normal work. So do we want him to play as Javante managers? Like, we we want it to go all the way. Like, not not run, not run, need an oil change, but we need Melvin Gordon just full breakdown. Just, like, go run until the wheels fall off so then it's full Javante time. Yeah, that'll be perfect for week 18. <laughs> yeah. Um, jo Josh Jacobs limited in practice. Nothing big there. We'll talk about some more injury news inside of the matchups. It is Friday. Foot Clan Friday. All right. Mel254, you are the winner of a DK Metcalf signed jersey. I believe that jersey also comes with three targets from Russell Wilson. Three targets. So congratulations. You are victorious. Thank you for supporting the show at jointhefoot.com. And thank you to pristineauction.com for supplying a signed DK Metcalf jersey mm -hmm. to give away. Um, you can go to pristineauction.com, use the code BALLERS, get a $10 credit. The Muth is Luth shirt oh, is uh, flying off the shelves at shopballers.com. And open people, another box. People want to wear it for Christmas or something, maybe. Give it for Christmas. Yeah, you could do that. To yourself. <laughs> so are we done with news, Brooks? Do you have anything else? I don't, I don't, I don't think we have any dishes. Is Brooks yet. still here? Yeah, sorry. You still with us? I am here. He's back there producing, um, a.k.a. he's making pancakes. No, 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 no. Let's uh, real quick from the Bears matchup yesterday, Bears-Cardinals, uh, Justin Fields is limited again, um, and then Dalton, uh, Andy Dalton still got the starter reps yesterday. Yeah, I think it'll, it'll be Andy Dalton. If uh, Since this is a podcast, and even on the video on YouTube, you can't see Brooks, mm -hmm. it is important to me that we paint the picture 
when he is not actively speaking, he is answering a number. There's a phone bank, and he is checking the news. He is picking up phones, slamming them down. What do you got on this guy? What do you got on that guy? It's like QVC over here. It's <laughs> it's absolutely outstanding work back behind the cameras, Brooks. Like Schefter and Rappaport, actually. They like, get it from Brooks. Yeah, everyone thinks that they're out there hustling – Tracking down leads, calling it. No, they just call Brooks. And Brooks basically says, yeah, I'm going to give this one to Schefter. Yep. Yep. And nope, I owe Rappaport one. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so. thankfully, we get most of them. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Brooks. After Schefter. And, it's um, ridiculous. Oftentimes, he does sneak the word over to Sleeper because they send out the breaking alert. Mm -hmm. And uh, you should grab the app and make sure you get that channel. Let's talk matchups. Fantasy Forecast. All right, we covered the Buccaneers, Falcons, Cardinals, Bears, Chargers, Bengals, Vikings, Lions, and Giants, Dolphins on yesterday's show. Eight games left, beginning with the Philadelphia Eagles at 5-7, and seven, taking on the New York Jets, who are 3-8. and eight. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Eagles minus 7. The over-under is 44.5. Uh, you had your first kind of real stinker from Jalen Hurts last week. Yeah. Uh, because I chose to play him in our DFS lineup, and, and yeah, we got and you I wanted finally. to choose the safest player possible. But um, there's no such thing. You should choose him again this week. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. We've got that coming up as well. This game has slow and ugly written all over it. The Eagles have averaged 40 rush attempts per game over the last six weeks. Uh, it almost feels like the the crowd was heard by Nick Sirianni, and he said, "Okay, you want to run the ball." How about this? I'll show you I can run the ball. <laughs> yeah, we we haven't spoken enough of Miles Sanders, but he uh, somehow he's none of our start of the week because, um, because he was he was banged up. Like if if he was entering the practice reports and everything of uh, when we had to make those decisions, he definitely would have been in contention. Yeah, but he, full practice on Thursday, yes. so he he's back. He's going to be the dude, and this matchup is outstanding. You just talked about how many rushing attempts per game. You combine that with the Jets' lack of a rushing defense, and if he can't do it here... Oh, he's going to. But yeah, the, oh, yeah, he will. The funny thing is is that multiple times this week, I, I thought about three different Eagles running backs to be the guy I'm in on this right. week. There was a Boston Scott part of this week. Yep. There was a Jordan Howard part of this week where I was like, I'm going to put him in a DFS lineup because he... Oh, no, wait, he's hurt. And then Miles Sanders... As enticing as it is, he's never been a top 12 this this year. And so, you know, 40 attempts a game, he had 10 opportunities last week, and I know he got banged up. Yeah. So it's like, you're right. He should be a smash play, but I can't help but be a little bit worried by the questionable tag on all of those running backs. You saw Kenny Gainwell out there again. You know a lot of those attempts are Jalen Hurts. It's like there's five running backs. Sure, but uh, it, I think Jordan Howard is trending to be out. And if it's down to just Sanders and Scott, then I, I'm playing Sanders, and I would project him at least as a top 15 running back. Okay. Um, Jalen Hurts right back at it against yep. the Jets. They're the 30th-ranked defense against opposing fantasy quarterbacks in the last six weeks. Devontae Smith was Mike's start of the week, expecting a bounce back. Um, he did not practice on Wednesday due to illness. We don't have a reason to believe he'll be out. And Jason made Dallas Goddard at the start of the week at tight end yesterday. So it's really, when the Jets are your opponent, there's a lot of confidence you have in starting players against <laughs> That's them. True. That is true. Uh, Zach Wilson. No. No. I wasn't suggesting you start oh, him, okay. Mike. How dare you <laughs> I, infer I, by saying his name. I thought you were asking the question, and I was just making it easy for everyone. Elijah Moore did see eight targets. Um. But it, I, it's not a week that I'm excited about. Do you guys agree with that? Yeah, I mean, the, the Eagles have been great against wide receivers. Uh, on the season, they've given up the the third fewest fantasy points to them. Uh, Darius Slay has been awesome in coverage. So uh, I, I the fact that I, I love Elijah Moore's talent, um, I'm in on him rest of season. But there's still Crowder. There's still possibly Corey Davis here. And it's a tough matchup, so I would. Can we land all Jets? I would. Oh. I would. I would. Yeah. Are we I would grounded? Land. Including we grounded. running backs. I think I would land all Jets. Yep, we're grounded. All right. Uh, do you agree with that, Mike? At the running back position, because 
you know, you saw Austin Walter come in out of nowhere, get 10 opportunities. Tevin Coleman saw 19 last week, but we liked Ty Johnson before the week. I feel like this is a bit of roulette We against we, a really good run D. We did like Ty Johnson. Tevin Coleman actually popped up because they were in a positive script, and right. I do not expect that to happen. So I'm, I'm, it's, it's hard to argue for the Jets, but if I'm starting a running back, I would go back to Ty Johnson and expect him to be in a negative game script. Uh, before we move into the next matchup, I want to thank today's sponsor, Notion. With hybrid work becoming the norm, the strongest teams have two things in common, fellas, speed and alignment. Both come from having one hub where everyone can share work and processes, manage projects, and collaborate with clarity. And Notion is here for you. For, sizes of, uh, for companies of all sizes, Notion provides one central and customizable workspace that can be tailored to fit any team and bring all teams together to get more done and move faster. Notion is an all-in-one team collaboration tool that combines note-taking, document sharing, wikis, project management, and much more into one space that's simple, powerful, and beautifully designed. Plus, Notion has a worldwide network of millions of users creating templates, tutorials, and new inspiration. You can learn more and get started for free at Notion.so. You can check it out on your own and invite as many folks as you want to see how it works. Take the first step toward an organized, happy team today, again, at Notion.so. Also, I have a really cool gift idea. We want to thank Skylight Frames for supporting the show. The holidays, they're right around the corner. This is an awesome gift. In fact, over the last couple of years, we've realized what connection means and how to maintain it even in a difficult time. And so what Skylight has is a digital photo frame that you can update instantly by email from anywhere. So let me give you an idea on how to use this. Maybe you want to give the grandma and the grandpa a Skylight frame. Mm -hmm. And then when things are happening in your life and you're taking those pictures because everyone takes them everywhere, all you do is email it to an address, and it shows up on their frame. So they can stay, I mean, out of state, people that you want to stay connected to. And it's easy to use. Like that's a, It's a good point. When you're talking about grandma and grandpa, I, they're not the most tech-savvy people in the entire world, but the Skylight frame, I've got one. I love it. It's very easy, and Andy is right. Like, you get it up and running, and now I can just send, I can send uh, Nana it was, some It was picks. super easy. So as a special offer, you can get $10 off your purchase of a Skylight Frame when you go to skylightframe.com and enter the code FOOTBALLERS. That's right. Get $10 off your purchase of a Skylight Frame. Just go to skylightframe.com and enter the code FOOTBALLERS. That's S-K-Y-L-I-G-H-T-F-R-A-M-E.com, promo code FOOTBALLERS. The Colts at 6-6 six and six take on the... Two and nine Houston Texans in Houston. No, this is not my almost upset of the week. <laughs> oh, man. Colts are nine and a half point road favorites. The over-under is 44 and a half points. Uh, there has been some rumors that the team was considering only flying Jonathan Taylor to this game. Mm. And, and they realized they need a uh, center to snap the ball. That uh, That's correct. So it's just going to be the two of them. Two on 11? Two on 11, but it will be enough to get by the Houston Texans. Honestly, I don't think that's fair to the Texans. <laughs> I'm sorry, Houston fans. Yeah. Uh, I was actually saying, like, how it's hard right now to envision being a fan of this team without a real identity and a lot of uh, direction. When your when your headlines in Houston are which washed up running back did I sign this week, things are not going well, and I just don't see a world that they can, you know, divisional game. Sure, they're at home. But I don't see a world where they can get it done. Indianapolis beat them 31-3 to this year already. Uh, Indianapolis has actually beat their team implied point total in eight of the last nine games. So there's a 27-point implied point total for the Colts in this game. And they normally beat it. Yeah, of, I mean, there's, there's very few players on the Colts side of the ball that I don't actively want in my lineup. There's, there's four guys. I, I'm fine playing Carson Wentz. I think he's okay. Michael Pittman's going to get back to being... Pity City. Oh, we we got to rebuild after and the last couple weeks. We built this city. And the city is Houston. You got T.Y. Houston you could throw in there in a pinch. And, of course, Jonathan Taylor, who is the best running back in fantasy football right now. So this is one where I'm, I'm you know, kind of firing up all of those players from the Colts. Is Jack Doyle, after the number one overall finish last week, 6 for 81 and a touchdown, is he – 
was this mostly a product of just facing Tampa Bay? I think so. In the game script? Okay. Yeah. So you're not chasing a one-week wonder with baby hands? No, I mean, before that, three for 30, three for 31, one for one. Brandon Cooks did not practice Wednesday and Thursday due to illness. He's the wide receiver, 24 on the year. Um, he had averaged 107 receiving yards a game the first three weeks of the year. It's down to 48 a game since then. Brandon Cooks seems like less of a sure thing at this point in the season. Uh, do you guys – is yeah, I, he a real start-sit decision for people right now? I, I think he is. If it wasn't for the illness, I would I would be confident to throw him into the lineup. He's still going to get the targets and the market share. It It's not a great thing to share, um, but if you get enough of it, you'll be fine for fantasy, which is what we saw. But you combine the fact that he's – missed multiple practice practices with illness. And you've seen this a lot of teams uh, this year. I mean, Lamar Jackson missed the game. Um, well, David Johnson's dealing with the same, I presume the same illness, something going around there. Right. Missed practice the same days. So I, you know, I just don't know the running game. I'm not really wanting to attempt uh, you know, the, the Indianapolis Colts have a good run defense. So I don't know if there's anyone on the Texans that I could play. Brandon Cook's in a pinch. Ramondre Stevenson against Buffalo or Sexy Rexy in this game? R Ramondre. I play Ramondre. Okay. okay. I think here's the better question. Brandon Cooks or T.Y. Houston? Brandon Cooks. Yeah. Yeah. I cannot get myself there. I just can't do it. Yeah. To where I think that, you know, the uh, to be disrespectful, the corpse of T.Y. Hilton going out there, a shadow of what he once was. I mean, he just He just did it this year to Houston. I mean, I four for 80. I know, I know. <laughs> but that was still only good enough for 30, you know, outside the top 30 at the position. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's still – but why, a wide receiver three is a – that is a very What I'm saying is, is like, if player. everything goes right, I think you get a wide receiver three. Sure. But, yeah, Brandon Cooks, he, he – So you're going to get a wide receiver three. <laughs> Got it. Brandon Cooks is, is in for me. The Colts just – they don't generate a ton of pressure. And Cooks, even though they put up three points, uh, the Houston Texans on the Colts when they played last time, Brandon Cooks still had himself a fine game for fantasy. The Washington football team at five and six takes on the Las Vegas Raiders at six and five. The sportsbook line here, Raiders one and a half point home favorites. Over under is 49 points. Uh, both teams, you know, coming off a victory, right? And um, the Raiders got by Dallas on Thanksgiving. Washington's won three in a row. Their defense, it's improved since what we saw in the beginning of the year, especially against running backs. So we could start there in this discussion, Mike. Josh Jacobs, only one bus game on the year, only one top 10 game on the year. Oh, Josh man. Jacobs is just pedestrian. This is a this this matchup is terrifying uh against Washington here with, with Josh Jacobs has he has gotten it done. Um we finally saw a huge opportunity game, 26 opportunities on Thanksgiving against Dallas. He had not seen 20. Uh, opportunity since week five because he keeps leaving the game uh, hobbled. Now, again, only one bus game, but I I am playing him as a running back too. Uh, but we were, you know, we were discussing on uh, on the Spotify green room who's a player you're afraid to bench because you feel like the process and everything, like all the outside numbers are telling you that you should not play this guy. But at the end, he's still Josh Jacobs, who will see a lot of work and will have a touchdown opportunity. Because I, I like Derek Carr a lot in this game, but that doesn't mean that all the touchdowns are going to go to Derek Carr in the passing game. It, they're, they can very easily get have uh, you know Renfro dragged down on the four, and then Josh Jacobs gets a free touchdown, and he's perfectly fine. Yeah, I mean, if he falls into the end zone, which can easily happen, you're going to be happy. Outside of that, I don't think you're going to be happy with Josh Jacobs this week. He was not on the injury report on Wednesday, was added to the injury report on Thursday. We know that Classic in, Josh it, Jacobs. Right. We know that that's kind of been a uh, a nagging issue for him. So, to me, I against a much more improved Washington football defense, um, if there's a different option, a pivot guy, you know, you picked up Alexander Madison, and so it it moves. Oh, Josh, that'd be an well. Easy that's decision. easy. I'm just saying it moves Josh Jacobs down to a flex consideration, and you could throw in a good wide receiver. I would I would rather do that over a Josh Jacobs. It is a revenge game for Deshaun Jackson. He had a big week last week. Are you dart throwing with Deshaun Jackson? Like, would you play him or T.Y. Houston? Can't, can't <laughs> oh, ask me, man. 
Oh. I'm, I'm living in T.Y. Houston. Uh, he didn't practice on Thursday. We're talking about Deshaun Jackson. Uh, we're hearing it's a calf spasm. Uh, it's probably enough to get me out on Deshaun <laughs> Jackson. I think that is enough to get me out as well. Hunter Renfro, top 14 wide receiver in three of the last four weeks. You can flex Hunter Renfro. Absolutely. He's very uh, a good start in a full PPR. And Derek Carr is... Send in the car. Yep. Send in the car. Mike likes him. And, you know, I think that the uh, the Vegas line was a little surprising to me, I guess, with the trend of, of Washington. So the the fact that, I don't know, I thought maybe it would be a pick em game or, yeah. or Washington might have a point here. So um, one and a half uh, Raiders being favored by DK. So, I mean, it's... It's close. Yeah. And, and they're in Vegas. So it's not... I don't think it's too crazy. All right, what about the other side? I mean, Antonio oh, look, just real quick for the Raiders. Fra uh, Darren Waller not practicing. Oh yeah, I yeah, can't yeah, yeah, imagine yeah. that Darren Waller is in. And I am going to. I'm more than willing to play Foster Moreau. He is a actual good player. Um, he just he had Darren Waller <laughs> Waller pop up, and Darren Waller is elite. So yes, Waller plays over him, but Foster Moreau when Waller has been out. He has been more than serviceable. Foster Moreau or Mike Gesicki? Oh, man. Thought I picked the right name. That is that is a perfect line right there, and I'm sure my rankings don't say it right now, but I think I'd play Moreau. I lean that way as well. Logan Thomas or Foster Moreau? Logan, oh, Logan Thomas. Thomas. Logan right. Thomas is a great play. Yeah, yes. Mike's start of the week. That was a trick question. Just my way to get to the other side of gotcha. the game. Oh, what a professional. Um, Taylor Heineke, Antonio Gibson, Terry McLaurin and company. Logan Thomas, Mike, start of the week at tight end. Yes. Uh, you know, McLaurin is always in your lineup. Gibson, you know, I was just looking at total opportunities at the running back position, and there's been so much tumult, injuries, J.D. McKissick, off games, but you are getting the recipe for success for Antonio Gibson in the past three weeks, which is victory. I mean, he is very much like Josh Jacobs on the other side, where if you're in a favorable game, they're not afraid to give Antonio Gibson – a million touches. It's just connected to the equation. And with JD McKissick's injury, you know, they, he should be back. But again, Antonio Gibson seems like a really, really strong play to end the year. And that's not how things were trending in the beginning of the season. Yeah. And I, I do expect, I, I, the way that I see this game going is I think Washington football team, uh, is the better play. I, th I think they will be up. I think they'll win, but you have no idea when it comes to the Raiders. I mean, they, the Raiders could sure. win by 30, lose by 30 in this matchup. So, um, But I, I think the Washington football team has them a little bit outclassed here. Jamie, J.D. McKissick is still not practicing. It is a He's in concussion protocol. You think I'll miss? Yeah. If, yeah. if you're not playing, if you're doing nothing on Thursday, you've got to be trending to be out, at least just the way that I, I'm looking so Gibson's at this So Gibson's going to get targets. Antonio Gibson is going to – he's in a very good – position here with seven receptions just this last week and that wasn't that was not only reception work after McKissick suffered his injury like they were already involving him in that it didn't turn into a whole lot of yardage but half point or full point PPR scoring seven receptions that's just to juice the the line that he was that he already put up on the ground, which was over 100 rushing yards, he is a very strong play this week. He's going to get all the work, and the Raiders really struggle against the run. He was the number five running back last week, number six in week 10 against Tampa. It's lining up very well for Antonio Gibson to really, uh, if he didn't endear you to him during the first half of the year, he might win you a title. Jacksonville at two and nine take on the uh, they take on the Los Angeles Rams at seven and four. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here, Rams minus 12 and a half at home. The over-under is 48 points, but that only gives the Jacksonville Jaguars 17.8 and the Rams over 30. Mm. So this is not a an extremely complicated game to sift through from the Rams side. Stafford uh, and Cup are locks. You know, Van Jefferson, if Odell Beckham sits, Van Jefferson, you're going to get 10 targets, most likely in this game, and he should be solid. Yeah, um, Jefferson is he's still in for me, even if Beckham plays as a as a lower end flex. Daryl Henderson did not practice Thursday. Still into on Wednesday, McVeigh anticipated him, you know, back out there. 
But if he's not, Sonny Michel is a really strong start. If he's back out there, Henderson's I'm not... Henderson's a good start if he's playing. Is that where? You... Yeah, yeah. I'm not afraid of. I was if... saying Michelle's a good start if Henderson's out, but if Henderson's in, you need to play him and not Michelle. Agreed. Whoever the starter is here, I think is a is a top fifteen running back. Uh, Odell Beckham talked about it earlier. Status up in the air. If he's back in your lineup, it's a it's a great matchup that you don't really want to miss out on. So I think you have to play him. Yeah, yeah he was originally in my DraftKings lineup that we're revealing here in a few minutes, but I had to pull him because of the, the uncertainty. Well, let's get uh, less positive here. LaVisca Chenault, since 2005, LaVisca has the seventh lowest fantasy points ever for a wide receiver with 70 targets through 11 games. So oh, that is, a, that is an indictment on Trevor Lawrence to some degree. When the targets, you know, you know there's a difference between a quality target and a not quality target. So that's part of it, but you know he had nine targets in in the first post Jamal Agnew game, and he finishes the wide receiver fifty one. So are you just fully avoiding the wide yeah. receiver room here? Yeah, I, I don't think there's anybody that you can trust uh, in the wide receiver room at all. And what about the Irish Mauler here, uh, J James <laughs> O'Sh James O'Shaughnessy? Yeah, come on, he's back, baby. With the week one, five uh, targets last week for. The week one wonder, James O'Shaughnessy, uh, he was a player who got highlighted because after week one against Houston, he had eight targets, and he was one of those players where it was, okay, we now have the information of week one. Which tight ends are actually seeing volume? Who's getting a uh, Who has a high percentage of targets per route run? And James O'Shaughnessy was way up there and then follows that up with a week two uh, – 24-yard reception and went down immediately with an injury at the beginning of that game. That trend continued as Jacksonville went out and they traded for Dan Arnold, the postman. The postman came in to a bunch of targets. Now, unfortunately, he is now on the IR. Yeah, no mail for six weeks. Yeah, yeah, he's the mailroom is closed, but O'Shaughnessy is back. And honestly, as a Desperation streaming tight end. If I, I'm going Foster Moreau way over James O'Shaughnessy. I was going to say, I don't see them very different. I I personally do just of of uh, trusting Derek Carr sure. and that offense running through the tight end a little bit more. But O'Shaughnessy is in. He's in play. The Rams over the last six weeks, 25th against fantasy tight ends. Marvin Jones only one top 36 game yeah, in his no, last nine I'm, games. I'm out, man. And then the James Robinson situation. If he's in, you play him. If he's out, Carlos Hyde is scary as can yeah, be. yeah, he's scary, but Carlos Hyde is like people are picking up Rex Burkhead and playing him. I would play Carlos Hyde over Burkhead. I would not. I would. I would play someone other than those two. I mean, if you sometimes have, there's not a choice. If I went back and looked at the game logs this morning because I was considering picking up Carlos Hyde. I was like, I don't want him. I don't think he's going to do anything in this game. He'll get the ball a lot because what was the? It was the Buffalo game that he was the one and only, and that turned into 23 opportunities. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't pretty. No, yeah. because Rex Burkhead gets a lot. He gets Buffalo. a lot, too. Um, anything else in this game you want to talk about? Three straight losses for the Rams. Are the, <laughs> Jacksonville's the, the – That's the South. The South. Um, no South can jokes, Mike? You don't got anything else here for no, us? Okay. No, I was just um, – That's a one-timer? I was uh, – thinking oh man if the Rams lose <laughs> <laughs> the Ravens at eight and three taking on the five five and one Pittsburgh Steelers this is a fun game in Pittsburgh Baltimore four and a half point road favorites it's the first time Baltimore has been favored in Pittsburgh versus Big Ben Roethlisberger I was going to ask the question like that seems outlandish like that has not happened um, in any time that I can remember over under is only 44 points in this game and I buy that I, you know, we've seen Baltimore come out and just, you know, Mike, you had a firsthand seat last week to just struggles on offense. Mm -hmm. They figure things out. They win the ball game, but it's not always pretty. And listen to this. Baltimore, the number one seed in the AFC has scored six, 10, 16 and 16 points in the last three games. Gross. You're in Pittsburgh. It's I I would I'm in on the under on this one. I think this may be the uh, yeah I don't blame you. G game of kickers, 
or something of that nature. In, in, an insane stat here that I I just went and I had to vet it because Kyle's the one who, who got this, but Lamar Jackson uh, – in his career starts against Pittsburgh, seven turnovers, but it's two career starts. Lamar Jackson, it just the way it has worked out, like that's true. Huh? He's only played, he's only started against Pittsburgh twice, which is a which is crazy. Four turnovers last week by Lamar, oh. all targeting Mark Andrews, who I'm is obviously in your lineup. But. Yeah, look, I'm still I'm still playing Lamar Jackson, and I'm playing him with full confidence. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I unless you need him to get you the win. Yes, which I don't anymore. So he will have him <laughs> a fine game. There could be a little bit of rain towards the end of this game. So to speak to your under, uh, I could easily see that happening from a team. You know, the the it's not like the Steelers have been putting up a bunch of points. Two weeks ago, they did. They had I think like thirty seven points, but uh, the bread on that sandwich was about ten points a game. So. I could see a bad game, but there are a lot of really good pieces on both sides of the ball that could also blow it up. And, you know, uh, Deontay Johnson, we're all playing him, right? Absolutely. Ma massive, locked PPR guy. Uh, Chase Claypool's my start of the week. I think that he matches up perfectly against Baltimore. I agree. He's had some big plays. Najee can get it done. And so if Lamar Jackson shows up and the Baltimore Ravens offense can actually get going with – Hollywood Brown with Bateman with Mark Andrews. I I could see this game being one that has a lot of fantasy potential um, and hits over. So it, it, two two really um, clear paths for very different games in this one. So Pittsburgh, they tied the Lions and they lost to the Chargers and Bengals over the last three weeks. Um, they do play each other again in week 18, and that could be a, a game with significant playoff implications yes. for Pittsburgh. Who are fighting for their playoff lives right now? Hollywood Brown, he's in. Devontae Freeman, I mean, I play him. the The Steelers defense is not the Steelers defense of old against running backs. the The Muth is Luth. Yeah, Pat Fryer Muth in your lineup until Absolutely. otherwise, you know, tightened. You gotta <laughs> you gotta keep him Luth. And uh, look, and the matchups there. You know, the last six weeks, Ravens twenty seventh against fantasy tight end. So it's it is there. The San Francisco 49ers are 6 and 5. They're traveling to Seattle to take on the 3 and 8 Seahawks. DraftKings sportsbook line 49ers minus 3 and a half. Over under is 46 points. These two teams are going in the opposite direction. Seattle lost 3 straight. San Francisco has won 3 straight. Um They did play in week 4. Seattle won the game 28 to 21. It seems like a different time and space. When Russell Wilson was Russell Wilson, and um, right now, that is the question of the game. You're at home. Yeah. You're three yeah. and eight. And do you have the confidence to start your Seahawks in this matchup? Definitely not Russell Wilson. Um, <laughs> Jason's waiting no. for the mojo to come back. Yeah. And the mojo, I mean, the entire running back room is off, uh, is, is not. In One, contention. One hundred percent agree with you. I mean, Alex Collins likely the starter again, but no, they just they're they are not getting it done. And Russell Wilson, while he ended up as a top ten guy last week, number one, he he needed quarterback scoring to be just a just bad last week, and then he needed a ridiculous last second touchdown to push himself over. Uh, over that threshold and he just he looks he looks bad did you guys see penny and homer are practicing in full okay that makes so, it, that makes it even worse and they added That's, adrian peterson the running back room is completely 100 percent off limits well I mean, to be fair ian rampaport says that the addition of adrian peterson means that they're in win now mode Ooh. Win now. No one has revealed the record of this team to those involved. Win now because they added Adrian Peterson. That was actually – that's not win now mode. That was win then mode, like way back then. Um, DK Metcalf, there was news this morning, one of those fun little news blurbs that said, hey, we got to get that guy the ball more. <laughs> so that seems smart. Um I did expect this. I did expect there to be a 
squeaky wheel on the way because it's been three weeks and he's had the three kind of worst weeks in a row of his entire career. And so, you know, I don't know if this comes from him in the back room saying, Hey, get me the ball. Or if this just comes from them watching film and saying, we need to get him the ball, but it is a good sign yeah. that they need to get him the ball. And they need to just bench Gerald Everett so that they can, if, if he's too tempting. Yes. It's like Russ, stop it. Stop throwing to Gerald Everett. I know he's big and you might think that's DK Metcalf, but he's not. The numbers are different. Throw it to DK Metcalf. And I think he's just confused. I think Russ is thinking he's throwing it to DK Metcalf. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm playing DK Metcalf reluctantly realizing I could have a bad game, but he is a massive superhuman out there. Um, uh, Tyler Lockett, you can throw in your lineup as well. It's really in this game. The story is Elijah Mitchell to me. Elijah Mitchell is going to dominate. I mean, the Seahawks have been so bad against running backs. So bad. The whole season, they're the second worst. The last six-week sample, they're the second worst in the league. And here comes Elijah Mitchell off of 32 touches last week, looking great. A run game that's getting going on a three-win in a row 49ers team. I think they're going to come out and they are going to say, you Seahawks don't get the ball at all. We're going to control the clock. We're going to control possible. the time of possession. I think this game hits the under, and I think Elijah Mitchell, again, has 30 touches. All right, let me ask you this question. Are you willing to drop Jeff Wilson and move on and find somebody else? Yes, in as much as I'm willing. If he's there's a, another more important piece, but he is he's a – He's an insurance policy. Yes. And he is a – he's he, – He's like adding Chuba Hubbard in previous weeks or Sony Michelle or that category. Exactly. And, and you know, if you had Alexander Madison before Cook got injured, you're happy. Um, obviously, Jeff Wilson was bad in his one opportunity to play that role, but he was still coming off of injury and more time is only better. Debo Samuel is listed as doubtful. He won't play in this game. So no. George Kittle, Brandon Ayuk, they will carry the load in the receiving yes, they will. game. Ayuk is a strong start. Yes, he is to me. The, I, the matchup, I get it. It says otherwise. You know, Seahawks technically third best against fancy wide receivers over the past six weeks, but because they've been getting because they get they've been getting on. killed by the the running backs and tight ends. But he's still uh, last year when Debo was out, Brandon Ayuk targeted on twenty eight percent of his routes. Like Ayuk will see, and he's been playing he's safe. much he, he, better yes. football. Absolutely. George Kittle has averaged eight targets a game against Seattle. He has somehow never scored a touchdown against them. But um, Kittle's never been a touchdown scorer. I mean, he did the this year for the first time in his career, like a touchdown in back to back to back games. I, th I think his career high is like five touchdowns. You are correct. His career high is five touchdowns. That's crazy. So you're right. He's not been, and I didn't even realize it was that low. Sunday night football. The Denver Broncos at six and five take on the seven and four. Kansas City Chiefs. This one lines up to be more interesting than I thought it was going to be earlier in the year because uh, Denver, if they win this game, they're going to have the same record as the Chiefs. Crazy. The Chiefs are nine and a half point home favorites, however, and the over under is forty seven and a half points. The Chiefs are also playing well. They've won four straight games. However, their games have hit the under in five of six. So they have been. You know, the Broncos impressed me last week. They slowed down the Chargers after the Chargers had a big week. And they won a ball game that they needed to win. This division is tight. Raiders are six and five. Broncos are six and five. Chargers are six and five. And the Chiefs are seven and four. So, all four teams above five hundred. That's wild. Yeah, the the Chiefs. Uh, you you brought it up under in five of the last six. They often do not cover the spread, but they win close games. So I I I still think Kansas City wins this. Um, I like Clyde edwards alaire in this game. I think he's going to be the lead guy, and the Denver Broncos have a very good pass defense, and you can run on them. So I'm I'm confident to start Clyde Edwards-Alaire as my running back, too, um, on a week. And obviously, the other three pieces for Kansas City, you're never going to bench, no matter any matchup or any situation. Mahomes, Hill, and Kelsey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On the other side, Teddy Bridgewater. It's been a weird year. Yeah, sometimes he implodes. Other times he seems capable of, of doing what this team needs him to do, which is they want to play good defense. They want to run the football with, with uh, Javante's Inferno and Melvin Gordon. Oh, and it's they, time. It's maybe. It's maybe. time. No, you get out of here. 
We will speak this into existence. Melvin Gordon is 50-50 to come in and be 50-50 on carries. And so uh, if he's out, we'll get to see a serious load for Javante Williams. As Jerry that's Jones, what Jerry Jones would as say. As Jerry Jones would yes, say. Yes, of course. But uh, outside of that, it's actually a really tough situation to, to start anybody because the wide receivers, you know, what do you do? Jerry Judy has been very disappointing. Incredibly disappointing. Like, Cortland Sutton if, has vanished. All Jerry Court Judy did was ruin Cortland Sutton. <laughs> but true. he was supposed to ruin Cortland Sutton by by inserting himself into the picture and saying, look how good I am. Instead, all he's done is just ruin everything. <laughs> I mean, I, I the last few weeks, I mean, you have all of these guys finishing outside the top 50. So just don't play them. What do yeah, you last week, oh my goodness, against the Chargers, a game they won, 28-13. to 13. Cortland Sutton was the 81st ranked wide receiver. But wait, Jerry Judy was the 68th ranked wide receiver. But wait, Ugh. Tim Patrick was the 66th ranked wide receiver. Yeah, so, I, I would. I mean, Noah Fant is, is in That's, consideration. I want to ask, what do you do with Noah Fant? He has... He has He's all over the place. Of two weeks ago, great matchup against Philadelphia comes out. He's a top twelve guy, five for fifty nine. Last week against the Chargers, another great spot for a tight end, three for twelve. Noah Fant or I would play Logan Foster. Thomas. Oh, Logan, easy. I would yeah. play Foster Moreau. I think I would play Foster Moreau too. What did you go to? That's a hard one. Would you go to James O'Shaughnessy? No, no I don't no. think so. No, okay. Noah Fant has at least shown that he can give you some weeks that matter. Some yeah. week that matters. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, Monday Night Football: The Patriots eight and four taking on the Bills. Another really fun game. This is gonna be a bad weather game. Yes, it is. It'll yes yeah, projected. Bills to be. are right now uh, three point favorites. The over under is just forty two points. And then the that might be too high. And then the weather. The, so I was I was on a local radio this morning, and we were talking about Josh Allen. How do you bench Josh Allen? Also, how do you not bench Josh <laughs> Allen? the The oh. matchup is horrific against New England, and the weather is horrific. Temps below freezing, twenty mile per hour sustained winds. I'm not saying you do. I, I basically said if I had someone like Kirk Cousins, I might consider it. Otherwise, you're playing him. But this game could be a real true, one of those weekly, ugly, horrific games. Two yeah, great defenses. Yeah, I mean, the way that you find the path to success is probably the Taysom Hill, Jalen Hurts path. It's, you know, last week, Josh Allen ran the ball eight times for 43 yards. You know he can get into the end zone around the goal line. You're going to need some of that. Yeah. And you're going to need to survive a defense. I mean, you look at these two teams on the year and over the last six weeks, and they just keep doing the same thing, Dominating. Which, is, which is shutting down everybody. I mean, the Patriots, number one against quarterbacks and wide receivers. Over That's the last okay. Six the weeks. Bills are number two against quarterbacks. Yeah, and, and so you don't really have confidence in the passing game. You never, you're not going to bench Stephon Diggs. Correct. But I think you should probably bench the other pass catchers yeah oh maybe not Dawson Knox I mean you, you because of your options at, at, at tight end yeah but Sanders and Beasley are no out. thank you They're, I'm, I'm out on that what do you do with the running back situation you we don't know if Zach Moss will be inactive again like that's that's still up in the air uh I think he probably will be I, I think he probably will be as well but let's say you've got Devin Singletary who is at least volume wise is an okay play in this it, it will be a slush factory so hopefully he can hold on to the ball Never heard that quite <laughs> put that way but and you did have Hilliard and um uh Deontay Foreman have some uh, yes good weeks against them last week yeah and like over the on the season and over the last six weeks 18th uh, that's what the Patriots are against fancy running back so if, if there's any points scored on the Patriots that's where it is do you like but, him more than Brita I do. I think he'll get more volume. I agree uh, with that. Um, but the question is, do you take that risk going into Monday night with what's what already looks like a bad situation for for everyone involved? If Zach Moss is act is active, now everything is completely screwed up, and you would have already missed your opportunity for a Sunday running back. Yeah, I I mean you might not have the choice 
obviously. Um, if you do have the choice, I would I would rather, in this same game, I would rather play both Damian Harris and Ramondre Stevenson. I think that the Patriots are going to be able to run the ball effectively, and they're going to run it a ton. Um, the Bills are going to need to run the ball a lot, and I think that their best running back is probably going to be Josh Allen. We do have some uh, breaking news. You guys want to hit that button for me? Oh, sure. yeah. Breaking news. Daniel Jones is out. Oh, well, okay then. So Ex Mike expected to play. Mike Glennon, Miami Glennon. Uh, good luck, yep. dear, dear friend. Would you play Devin Singletary or would you play uh, Ty Johnson against Philadelphia? Singletary. Okay, Singletary – or uh, I get Rex Burkhead against the Colts. Singletary. Okay. Mm. I, sort of, I think it's – But it's a, it's around it's that tough. level. Yeah. They are favored. The Bills are favored in this one. The, 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 uh, the Patriots are on fire right now. But in snow games, if it's slushy, if it's wet, if it's a mess, negative 4.4 points expected per game for the quarterbacks, and that's not – accounting for the brutal matchup. So you weren't thinking about Mac Jones in this one, and nor should you. Damian Harris, Ramondre Stevenson, I do think that they're both in play. I have a, I have a roster where both are in, play, are, are both in the same lineup. Oof. Um, you better start praying now. Well, Brandon Bolden was limited. Uh, there is a chance that Ramondre gets a little bit more passing work. Even Harris has had some targets. And then the wide receivers, I'm avoiding them this week. Kendrick Bourne, Jacoby Myers. 100%. Yes. All right. Is that all the updates? DeAndre Swift is officially ruled out. Okay. Corey Davis will practice on Friday. Okay. More injury news at jointhefoot.com, the Injury Blitz podcast, the game day alerts. Without further ado. Fantasy Faceoff, presented by DraftKings. The New England Patriots of this segment, Mike has uh, he's run off uh, several victories mm -hmm. in a row after a you know a slower start to the year, and took it home again this week. And uh, somebody has to spin the wheel of shame. It's been a long time, gentlemen, but mm. I have finally caught up with you guys on losses. <laughs> Let's spin the wheel. Wheel of shame. The wheel is spinning. We got a jester hat, jester hat. a farmer hat. Cousin. <laughs> and Wait. Uncle – nope. Cousin It. Cousin It. Okay, that's Cousin the – that's it. the uh, – that's Refresh the hair. Refresh my memory. Cousin It is the, the, the hairball. That is an Adam's Family reference. That's oh, just – Oh, my gosh. We have a Cousin It. I'm looking at it on Google. <laughs> oh, man. We have a Cousin It. So okay. This will be fun to talk through. <laughs> We're going to see how this goes. <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> oh my goodness! So that's an Adams family. Oh, he's got the glasses too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jason, here's some glasses for you. You oh. need to put those on. Where Reach are out. they? There they are. Where's my so, microphone? Well, we'll see if Jason can get his line open. <laughs> he, he's trying to get oh, the glasses. Man. This is pretty good. Okay. Uh, can you, you see, Jason? I can see nothing. <laughs> I am 100% blind. Did you YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers. <laughs> Your, the nose is just You look ridiculous. This is a wonderful. Oh, yeah. Is there a place for me to read your lineup for you? The only issue is the lineup. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to peek ski here, and I'm going to send my lineup to Brooks, and he can tell me yeah, if I remember Brooks my. Yeah, Brooks can do it. Oh, man. I am <laughs> oh, beautiful. Oh, that is. You're your beautiful baby. All right, oh. why don't you guys start? Yeah, we'll yes, st yes. Week, uh, my goodness, he looks ridiculous. We've got our week 13 <laughs> face-off lineups. I will kick it off at the quarterback position. Oh, what did you do this week? I wavered. I had different names that would slid mm -hmm. in and out of my lineup. I almost went Derek Carr. I didn't. I went with $7,200 Tom Brady. 
against Atlanta. You got to get that face covered up, Jason. I can oh, see. Oh, do I not? Yeah, I can see way too much of your face. Take I, the glasses off and then just recover. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. So you you paid up for for Thomas. I did. Tom Brady, seventy two hundred dollars. Okay, that's a lot for QB. I don't blame you for going with Tom Brady this week. I took your budget quarterback though. I went my start of the week. I'm going Derek Carr. Against the Washington Is he football in the team, six thousand range, six thousand flat. Yeah, I thought about it, it but I didn't some- do it. <laughs> I hope that he has a good game because I have a couple of his receiving options. However, I went with Tom Brady as well. All right, you did. You spent up on Tom Brady. My running backs, Jason, <laughs> Jason, Jason tried to ask me about them yesterday in the studio. Jason's always fishing he for, is. for he your want, lineup. He, and what he wanted to know is whether or not I paid up for Jonathan Taylor. And let me tell you something, Jason. I did. Did. Yeah, of course you Jonathan did. Jonathan Taylor, 9,200. Oh, man. And I, my other running back, I went with Alexander Madison at $7,600. Holy. Ooh. You have no money left. We'll find well, out. Those three are very expensive. I, as well, have Jonathan Taylor. Okay. And I pivoted mid-show to Antonio Gibson oh. as my second running back. Very, that's, that's a good pivot. Uh, my two starting running backs, I paid up for Joe Mixon at, yes. at 8,100. I felt like he was a pretty good. Uh, he's a great start. A, a, he's a great start with the Chargers. 9,200 for Jonathan Taylor. That's just that's tough to get there. Uh, and then at 5,400, just secu- it just got secured. Uh, he was already in my lineup. Uh, but I will go with the original Jay Willie, Jamal Williams, against the Minnesota Vikings at 5,400. He's going to catch a bunch of passes. Yeah, uh, cool. no question. Uh, my wide receiver room, it gets interesting. But I do have Mike Evans. Mike Evans at 6,700 paired with Tom Brady. Okay. I have Brandon Ayuk at 5,600 mm. against okay. Seattle. And my bargain wide receiver. I went with Zay Jones oh, okay. of the Las Real. Vegas I, Raiders. Just 3,200. I don't hate that. A ton of targets last yeah. week. Now you've got some uh, rumblings of this Deshaun Jackson issue. You've got no Darren Waller. I'm going Zay Jones. I think that's smart. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, my Jay, Jason over here talking, but I can't see his mouth. <laughs> yeah, um, I can't see hair. anything, so I have to feel for my microphone. Now, do you know these wide receivers? I believe that? I do. Brooks has my lineup to correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm starting with Deontay Johnson, PPR machine. Mm-hmm. I believe I have a different uh, Brady stack with Ooh, Chris Godwin. Good. I'm glad we have a difference there. Um, and then my third wide receiver, another mid-show pivot, is Hunter Renfro. Uh, so I have the much better option from the – uh, yeah, Las what Vegas would you dream. pay? What's the cost on Renfro, though? Uh, you, if you think I memorized the prices, <laughs> no, you're I'm asking Brooks. Brooks. Uh, Fifty-eight hundred. Okay, okay, so that's a lot more expensive than the thirty-two hundred I had. I, yeah. I considered going with the Hunter Renfro Derek Carr stack, but I did not. I also I have Deontay Johnson, so we have that crossover at sixty-eight hundred. I have Brandon Ayuk. We have yep. that crossover at fifty-six hundred. But then my other, my third wide receiver at just sixty-two hundred dollars. The return. Of DeAndre Hopkins. Nice. Yeah, I had him in my first lineup as well. Very I, nice. He, he's so mispriced. There, he's only priced there because the the algo sends it down as he doesn't play. You also now know, because of the absence of any Vegas stack for Mike, that Foster Moreau will be his tight end momentarily. Wait, <laughs> go slow your roll, my friend. Um, so as, why don't you as, start with the tight end, your flex, and your defense? At the tight end position, I have Foster Moreau. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your flex? Uh, my flex is my champion, Antonio Gibson, coming in at fifty seven hundred. Nice, I like it. Um, I have Foster. Wait, Monroe. what? Who's your defense, uh, Mike? The, uh, the Miami Dolphins okay. against the New York Giants, which it just got even better. Slow because down, cousin. It slow it's down. Thirty three hundred for the Dolphins. Um, just to be clear, the Foster Monroe was what twenty seven hundred. Twenty seven hundred. Yeah, I couldn't quite get him in there. Couldn't afford him. <laughs> I couldn't afford twenty seven hundred. I lit- For literally real? Couldn't. Did you go cheaper than that? Yes. That so ex- you're O'Shaughnessy. I'm O'Shaughnessy at twenty six hundred. Oh, okay. And yeah. I also have Jamal Williams as my flex at fifty four hundred, and nice. the Washington Football Team at twenty five hundred oh, against the Raiders. Okay. Very nice. So we've got some crossover here. I have the Washington Football Team, and I have Foster Moreau. Um, but then my big difference maker here is my cheapest uh, player on the roster, which is. Uh, Josh Reynolds, 
I believe. Did I did I remember my whole lineup correctly, Brooks? You sure did. All right. You watching you talk in I see a little too much of your nose now. Oh, I Can apologize. Please, that's, uh, that's on me. That's offensive. And there's the, the hat. Like you look like a it's I mean it's cousin it, but you also you look like a hipster and it, things just went went haywire. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you. A little too can, much you, can you breathe? Uh, hair tonic. Barely. It's hot in here. <laughs> it's scratchy in here. Yeah. And I don't like it. Do you feel shame? Oh, I, I, I can't feel any shame here because I can't see. All right. Uh, I don't, I don't even have to, a clue how stupid I look. You be able to see to feel shame. All right. Download the DraftKings app now and use the code BALLERS. This week, new customers can get a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes. That is the code BALLERS only at DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner partner of the nfl minimum five dollar deposit required eligibility restrictions apply see draftkings.com for details well it will be fun to find out who has to spin the wheel of shame next week sunday live one hour before sunday kickoff at ballerslive.com mike will be with you he will be tilting with you helping you make decisions oh you know i will it's a good time goodbye cousin it <laughs> goodbye <laughs> Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.